some blue, put a touch of brown in it. I don't want any yellow in it yet. This is going to be our sky, but like I said, we're kind of down in the woods. We're not going to have a whole lot of sky to this. We'll get it pretty white. Now, I know we always say this. We start the painting with a, a background and underpainting. It, it's a background, just a coat of paint, then usually an underpainting, and then we paint on top of that. And y'all tired to hear me say it, but most of this is going to be covered up. We just got to get a, a coat of paint on the canvas. Um, I do want to make a little bit of a, of a glow in the middle. So as we get towards the middle, I'm going to put more of the gesso. Um, I didn't make nearly enough paint. In the very middle <laughs> is where it's going to be the lightest. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to do a circle, just mainly at the top is where I want that light patch. Mm -hmm. um, So this is just kind of straight gesso in the middle. It has a blue tint to it, of course. But as I get out to the outside, I'm going to get a pretty good bit darker. I actually want to be about, probably about like that at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, good, pretty dark. Um, I'm just going to kind of mix on the canvas as I go. It's a little easier to, to get the paint to flow that way white in it as it go. It doesn't matter, all this is going to be covered up, except for maybe that much in the very middle. So, just going to kind of mix it as I go. You don't want too much water during this phase. Especially the bottom half, I just want something to kill that stark white canvas at the bottom, just some color. When I get back to the top, I'm going to worry more about what the color looks like. That's our sky, and that will show through a little bit more. But that is about how blue I want the outside of it to be. Not quite even that blue. You just got to work quickly with this and put it on. Give me that, uh, that gesso up there. This mixing on the canvas is something that people are scared of sometimes, but it does help to get it done quicker and to make it look look smoother. Mm -hmm. Right now, now, I don't care how smooth it looks. I'm just ready to get the whole canvas covered up and wet, get it, get the paint on there. But then, uh, before it gets completely dry, come back and kind of feather it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just kind of lightly, not a whole lot of pressure on the brush at this point, just kind of Around. And again, this brush brush and things I don't care about on the bottom for sure, but at the top, I am going to try to smooth those out. You could even at this point grab a second brush if you'd rather. Um, Starting the lightest part, kind of work my way out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it does show through, it doesn't need to look too weird. Nice thick coat of paint to work with. I know all this is going to be covered up, so don't worry about it too much. All right, let's get that far, and then we'll jump in here so you can kind of get a visual of what's. Since I know what I, what I want, it's hard to kind of convey that. Our, um, if we do have a you know horizon line, it's going to be just just below center, so probably about here. Um, let me see real watery so I don't have to paint over it. Uh, this side will kind of bank down towards it like that and then our, our creek is going to come in right here. It's going to kind of come around the corner here so we'll have another land mass kind of on this side. In the back you really won't be able to see the creek because all of this is going to be growing up with trees and things over here and this side too. But the, uh, the light is coming from behind this bank of trees. The washing across the, the creek here, where there's going to be a lot of rocks and things in here that kind of catch oh, the light. Dude, rocks. Um, <laughs> but then in the in the foreground here, we're going to have a fallen a fallen uh, log or tree of some kind going into the water, and possibly even casting a shadow into the water with some turtles on it. That'll be week four, you know. So we'll get there. So first step uh, tonight, I want to make a color. That is, 
if this is this is my brightest color, I want to go to the very next shade that's there, which I'm just going to use what I what I had here, and this is my little liner brush to start with. I don't want I, we but sometimes we'll, we'll use watery paint that you can see through to make it light, or sometimes we'll ghost over it or, or gloss over it to make it fade away in the distance. This time, I just want to use the right color. It's going to be just a shade darker than my lightest. So it's lighter. It's, it's uh -huh. lighter than that, but it shows up over here on the white. That's what I want. <coughs> All right. And so I'm going to get plenty of water in this, so it'll flow right. And maybe easier to do this upside down. He is having plenty of water, and I'm just going to pull some pull some lines down from here. They don't have to be perfectly straight. The faster you do them, the better. They don't even have to connect to anything at the bottom. Each time I go back into this paint, if it's a slightly different color, that's okay. I don't want to get too dark too quick, and I don't want to get too, uh, too thick with these. Mm -hmm. This is my thin liner. And I do want them to kind of come off the canvas if possible at the top. And I'm going to go all the way into the very middle but very, very little in the middle. <coughs> As I get out towards the outside, they'll get a little more dense, a little thicker. This is phase one. We're gonna do several phases of this as we go out. So this first phase is little thin tree pieces, tree trunks. And if you notice, they kind of go inward at the mm -hmm. top. If you've ever been to an opening in the woods or a creek or something where the sunlight is peeking through, all the trees grow towards the, the sunlight like that, you'll notice. <coughs> I'm doing kind of up and down strokes, just kind of throwing these. There's not a, you don't have to do each individual tree, just some up and down brush strokes. And while that's still wet, still wet I'm going to go with my soft bristle fan brush some of that same same <laughs> color same shade Let's see if I can get the right shade going I want this to be mostly blue I'm still not putting any yellow in it it's blue leaning towards gray just a little Now once I get the color right and rinse my brush out, I kind of have to chew this brush up and get it packed right. <laughs> it ain't quite worn out yet. Is it your soft or your cold? It's soft. This is, this is going to be a soft bristle brush. And you, you want to get it to spread out as much as possible like that. This one is not going to be quite nice. Rub it around and make it spread out. So... That still may be too dark. I just want it just very light. And so this technique, if you've never done this before, we're going to use this light brush. It's going to you're going to hold it perpendicular to the canvas. You're sticking straight out, not not this or this, just straight in. And there's kind of a smile shape that I'm kind of working towards. And I want to use the tip of the brush and the middle bristles in the brush to make the tips of the of the leaves when they come out. I'm not going to spend a lot of time making individual leaves. Um, there's a lot of this again is going to be covered up. But this is a lot of water, at least half water, probably more like 75% water in this paint. Mm -hmm. And it can get kind of dense in here, kind of let the brush kind of lay down a little in the inside part of the trees here. But as we get out towards the edge, I want to kind of feather them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I paint the inside first until my paint just starts to run out. And then I come out here to the edge and get some of those really light, delicate leaves out on the end. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Don't try to paint an individual tree. This is just a cluster right now. Looks like a tree. Looks like a bunch of trees. A bunch of trees. That's the idea. When he does. <laughs> As I get back to the uh, the bottom, we're going to have some stuff kind of come up 
So it's going to disappear into the bottom. And as it goes back, we're going to have darker layers after darker layers coming into this. That's what we got in some white there. But I don't want it solid, but I do want to kind of Dance. just kind of blur that out to the back. It's going to be covered up. The only part we're going to end up keeping of this is probably this middle part here. And then the next step, we'll keep a little more. Next step, we'll keep a little mm -hmm. more. But each layer will go back over so we can have layers of depth behind there. Yeah. <clears throat> Same thing on the other side. Start here. When the brush starts to run out, feather it out to the middle. I don't care that these are touching each other. They're not really necessarily directly across the street from each other. You know, there are yeah. different layers in there. But from this distance, all you can really see is the, the highlight or the shadow of them from, from back here. So that's the technique, though. Get the, some of the paint off the brush before you get up to the, to the soft part. And those trunks, you, they disappear. That's, that's okay. You'll see them through every once in a while, but I'm not trying to paint leaves on the trunks that I painted. <laughs> uh, you'll go nuts trying to make a million little trees. Just make it a cluster. As you go back, if the color changes a little, that's okay. Just right in the middle is the big, biggest part. Or get tired. <laughs> yeah, you can do this left handed. <laughs> That's all there is to that. Okay, let's get that step done. And in about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll come back. Second step's gonna be just like the first step. We're gonna do the same kind of thing, only a difference is it's gonna be a little darker. We're gonna come out just a little bit, but I don't wanna have a hard line, just like I don't wanna have a hard line of where the white is and where the trees are, don't want a hard line of where the light of trees and the dark trees. It shouldn't look like you've got a circle there that you're looking through. Everything should look <laughs> gradual and fade in. Um, but then also with each layer going forward, we're going to put some stuff down in the bottom here, some brush down in the bottom. So next step, we're going to use that same, start with the same color, roughly. Okay. This time I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow in it. Just enough. It shouldn't be green. We don't want green. Some ugly, yeah, something like that. It's kind of got a green <laughs> flair to it. I you really want it to be green. more. It's kind of got a green. If anything, it should be more blue <laughs> with just the tiniest hint of green. Play with it a little bit. That's more like it right uh -huh. there. And then lighten that. Yeah. Get a little bit brown, make it a little bit oh. dirtier. Alright, so then the mistake would be if at this point after mixing this paint, if I took this brush full of this thick <laughs> paint and started painting, I want to wash all that out. Yeah. I want my paint to have plenty of water. Yeah. Just pour some water in it. Brush. Separate it as good as it can. And then I'm going to come in there and pick up some of that really watery paint. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to get your bristles to mm -hmm. separate the way you want them to. See how close I am with this color. That's about right. Um, again, get a lot of the paint off the brush before I work my way back up towards the front. All right, and I'm going back to pick up some of that paint. And again, the trees kind of lean in. Um, I'm going to do a couple more trunks too, but you can do the trunks first, last, it doesn't really matter. I think I'll just do one side at a time this time. only real uh, part that I'm paying attention to how it shapes is the very front edge over here where they stick out into the um. into the clearing. <laughs> what are we putting over those We don't blocks? really want to cover that we front that. edge. Yeah. No, we're going to keep that edge. We're moving this one back so just a hair. So me. What are you putting over those big This over here? Yeah. A darker tone of the colors? No, when we, what are you going to paint over? What's going to cover that up? More layers of this and eventually some big trees and okay. a lot of stuff. Okay, well then that, that makes me look good. And I just want to have something back here to put the Can next layer on. Picture? Yeah, but I can't remember. Yeah, I'm that's all I <laughs> um, If you left this blank, then each layer, the dark paint wouldn't look as dark. You know, right. it needs to have something darker underneath it. And I don't want to paint it smooth and pretty like a wall because I, I like the character have having some, some holes color. in it. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of scrubbing that out back there. You can use 
this technique at, at some point if you want to pull up some pull up some light stalks in there. Some of that'll show through, most of it won't. That turning thing. As we get to the darker colors, this is an easier way to do it. You can also, you know, go back with your liner and pull a few up in, in between there. I don't want to get too uh, too worried about tree trunks yet, yeah. though. You'll be able to see a few poking through, but not, not a whole much. lot. Um, especially if you, as you get out towards the middle here, I don't want to take away from you know what's behind there. Yeah. I think I like the. Uh, there. Side one. Before I move on, and we'll do this one and let y'all go so y'all can get started, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. But at the um, while I'm in the same color and the same brush, at the bottom where I said our horizon line is about a um, little below halfway, mm -hmm. well, we're gonna have some brush kind of at the bottom. So I'm gonna make this pretty solid, and again, we'll cover all this back here up later. But as it gets out towards this front edge, uh, gonna kind of use the lay the brush down a little bit more, kind of get some yeah. like tall grass. Yeah, like. sort of some tall grass or some some brush, and, and go all the way across the middle with that. I don't want too much hard lines. Mm -hmm. This brush ain't cooperating real good for this, but you know, it, it, as long as it doesn't look weird, you just want some <laughs> some color, some solid um, going across the middle there. And I didn't really want to stop at that line because we were going to paint a bunch of stuff here. But I want to know where, I want to be able to see kind of where that was. Yeah. Um, oh. So I'm just kind of coming on down with this color. All of this is going to be covered up. Again, we'll do the other side the same way and we'll bring that brush in from that side as well. Um, but the next layer, we'll go out just a little more. And we'll go a little darker, a little greener. So don't get too dark too quick. Just gradual steps. Okay. And don't get too green. No pretty greens. <laughs> We're going to start painting some actual more trees that are closer and not just mist. <clears throat> so we are going to get into a little bit of a green this time. But again, the rule is no pretty. If it looks pretty, you know, it looks like something you'd buy in a store in a tube, you know, that looks like that. That's not a green we want to use right there. That's green, but that's not a green we like. We want to go with brown. Not real green. We want it to be, That's you know, kind of olive. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not getting any white in this. Maybe there's a little bit on the palette underneath it, but mm -hmm. um, getting pretty, pretty dark at least to start with. It won't be this dark because I am using so much water. Mm -hmm. What's behind it will show through. You can see it's got just a hint of white probably in it mm -hmm. from the plate. Same thing, I'm going to get these brushes separated. And before I, let's see, I'm going to go with a little bit bigger liner brush. These are not my foreground trees. A little bit more brown for that, uh, more black actually for that, uh, for the trunks. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in there. Okay. Alright, so we got our middle layer, next layer, and again, don't want to cover up, so now I'm going to come into about here. And this is where the two sides are going to start looking a little bit different. Um, Let's see, I'm going to start back a little further and turn this upside down. It does seem to be easier. Yeah. Different shades, even. Not too many of these, but these are a little more clean, uh, a little more. Visible. Exact, I guess you'd call it, than the, the kind of random ones we did before. Some thinner, some thicker. Some of them are a little bit thicker than others. It's okay if they're shaky, wavy. 
couple of them might come from the same face that way. Still don't have an exact bottom for them yet. We'll put that in later. We can do the, the land. Mm -hmm. Don't want them to have a bottom. So kind of fuzz that out a little bit. All right. Let's see. I don't know. You can come here with the tree. So you were concerned at first when we came to make a perfect forest. Amazing how that works. Alright, gotta get that first one. This is play right. So we're not darkening the color, same color? No, this is darker. This is a pretty good bit darker. Yeah. Then the trunks? Yeah. Is no, not the trunk. No, this is actually a little lighter than the trunk. It's more green. I realized I'm ADD. I don't put a whole sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. I and on this one, <laughs> you really, as you get further, we practiced now the the dark, the uh, faded out trees were practiced. Now that you've got your technique down, <laughs> these front trees yeah, will you come. See how they kind of go upwards? He's not pushing them all the way in. It's the tip of the bristles. And it just kind of goes upward like that. Back here, you lay it down and make it, you know, messy. But at the at the very tip of the, you get the bristles to separate. <laughs> do it, just do it. Some of this I want to come way out here. Yeah. But I'm not covering up what's behind it. It's lacy oh, enough to see through it, and uh, so it's not going to cover everything behind it. Same at the top. Yeah, you want to be able to see everything behind there. Now, as I get back this way, it does get more dense, and you know, it's still some holes in it, but it's not uh, not as Are lacy as it is over there. This will be our last layers for tonight, but next week we will put another really darker edge on the far right side. But where we went just increments of just a little, the next time we'll go way back here. We'll leave a lot of this showing. Um, and I want it to be, next time we'll make it a little darker towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, as I get to the bottom, I'll do some of the same stuff that I did down here. But again, I don't want to cover everything up. This is more just grasses and brush, weeds. I'm scrubbing that in. Stuff. I don't want a hard line down here because I don't want to have to fight to cover it up. So I'm just mm -hmm. softening up the bottom of it. Yeah, it does have some yellow in it. It's kind of an army green. Mm -hmm. um, not a whole lot of white. If you get too much white, it's going to look like mint. Now, on this <laughs> side, I want to get it a little bit more yellow. Uh, right, it's got more light on that side. So I'm going to slightly vary that color. Don't, we're not, we're not crazy completely. You're getting it lighter with the yellow? Yeah. Right, not putting white, not putting white, putting white just getting it more, more yellow. yellow. It's not lighter, it's just more yellow. Yeah. Um, which makes it... It's a light olive green instead of a dark olive green. <laughs> that's going to be tested over here to see if I want to go a little more yellow than that. Mm -hmm. I want it to be it's visibly more different, but not... Food green, <laughs> yeah, sweet pea. Right? Not a world yeah. difference, but not a world of difference, but just a you know, slight bit there. You can mm -hmm. see the, the difference in the color there, and that's going to be covered up. But mm -hmm. on this side, um, I think I may leave a little more of this mm -hmm. where we went just to inch or two on that side. I think I'm going to leave a little more of that showing on this side. Um, not quite go far as far it's out. And actually, now that I see this yellow, I like it, but I don't really want it for the whole mm -hmm. side. So as I go, as I start running out of paint and need more, I'm going to make it a little darker. So it gets a little darker as it goes back in. I think that will help give it some depth. Again, this part, we'll put some more up here to cover some of this up. So not, not as much. Getting, we're getting out there where it's not going to be hidden that much. You can see that we get a lot of variety of different shades just mixing these same three colors of these.
So there's a variance of color, but you can't really see where one starts and one stops, and that's by design. Uh, my land is actually going to be right down here, my line was there, so uh, keeping that in mind. And while it's still wet, so this. Yeah, it, it'll show a little bit, and it, it just looks like little sticks and things when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. The um, same at the bottom here. I'm going to get a little more yellow in that mm -hmm. for that bottom edge. Yeah, that like sunlight. That. Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just color. Not really painting anything right here. Mm -hmm. Just putting the paint on, scrubbing it out, and getting, getting some color in there. Paint, putting the Again, our land is going to come in here somewhere, so we're going to lose some of that, but I don't have to paint individual, don't try to paint individual grasses or bushes or anything like that. It's just stuff. Well, if you just make grass. Uh-huh. Mix those up a little bit. And, uh, looks like little limbs peeking through. Quick and easy. All right, so a little darker on this side, light a little yellower on this side. Don't get carried away with the yellow. It'll dry a little darker than this even, but that's that's it for tonight. Y'all get that far, we'll be. So y'all can see kind of where we're headed with this. Make something nice to cover up. <laughs> the I brought the pictures this time, but I don't want I didn't want to print one for everybody because I don't want you copying the picture because it's not going to be exactly this. But I'm kind of marrying these two together. This is a. Uh, this is more what I want to do with the shape of the the creek, um, sort of. I want it to kind of come around the corner the way that does. It comes from the back, kind of comes around the corner. So we've got three land masses. All right, this side is a little steeper because the light's going to be kind of coming from the back, filtering through this way. Um, so you'll have some light cast on this one. The light comes across these rocks on the background. That's a separate landmass right there. Mm -hmm. And then we may push that one a little further to the left and then bring this one out a little further so the creek kind of comes around a little more. But this third one up front will have a little more detail to it. And then our, our log laying across the front is going to kind of be on this side. Mm -hmm. So we kind of get a zigzag pattern through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The log laying across will be kind of coming through here instead of this ripple. And we'll put some little turtles sitting on the log there eventually. Um, but to start with, just to give you an, in, an indication of where the land is at, I'm just going to kind of sketch that in here. And I suggest that you do some of this just to give you an idea so you can see how to move forward. That's sort of going to be side one. It's flatter at the bottom, steeper at the top. Um, this one it's going to be a little smaller. And I want to be able to see where the creek kind of comes around the corner. So it'll kind of come out to more of a point like that. And then much later, it's going to start kind of above this one and be steeper and be more or less in the foreground here. Maybe come out just a hair further on that one. Uh, and then again, our our logs will be over this way. So we've got a general kind of creek coming around um, with the log here. This is all creek on this side. Mm -hmm. So that's the log laying across it. So the creek coming this way, it's going to come around from behind those logs, those rocks, come around and flow this way. So um, having that in mind, we've got to do more trees, more foliage. The, the, the middle here is going to have to be kind of married. We're gonna, I want to see the rocks coming through here where the creek turns the corner. Mm -hmm. But this middle is going to have to be, you know, that's where your sight is drawn. So it kind of has to vanish off, but it has to be able to, get, to kind of see where the creek goes. For the, um, so we'll do it in stages. Let's do the back 
background of this side first, but not these front trees, but the background, that back island back there, and then the this front part here. Maybe we can get those done tonight. Uh, going forward, we're going to use the same techniques and the same colors and stuff as we did before. I'm just going to get a little more, you know, dominant with the color as you come forward. I'm going to start with a dark color that's you know almost black but I want it to be a little more towards the blue side and before you add yellow if you, if you start with yellow you end up with happy green <laughs> and all happy green. no happy green you don't need a ton of this because I'm going to add some water to it make it go further and if you can get your brush to play nice and separate this, this is you know one of the easier things this is pretty dark, but it's got enough water in it that it's going to dry lighter. Uh, you know, everything gets darker as it comes forward. So I want to save some of my really darker stuff. But I also want to do some of this, too. I want to have some areas that are dark, mm -hmm. especially towards the middle. That's, I can have some of this really light stuff in front of it. So you got to be thinking about contrast the whole time. So I think I want a darker area in here where, my, where I can have some contrast there. Because this is further back. Uh, but so it, it's further back. You usually want dark for the foreground, but I'm gonna, I want to be able to have those highlight things further back mm -hmm. there too. So tree-wise, I don't want to bring these out quite as far. It's almost like a fifth layer of what we've already already done. We did it four times last week. <laughs> And because these big trunks are going to be coming in front of it, I still want to leave a little bit of light showing through there. So they'll show up better if it's not super dark behind it. But really more focusing on the edges here. Not a whole lot of detail to this part at all. That's probably good enough. A little bit of variation in the darkness here and there so it looks like more than one getting close enough to have some individuality to some of the trees. It's getting a little more solid. That's the main thing I want to do at the bottom. But my dark area here where I'm going to have some highlights. It's hard to, to think ahead and show you what's in my mind, what I want to do for mine. So if everybody's ends up a little different, that's okay. As long as you kind of have a plan for what you're doing, uh, it, it'll look good. I'm going to put a little, kind of pat my metal up, but that, that creek is coming around the corner. Because also my really light rocks right there, I want something kind of dark behind those mm -hmm. so they show up better. Most of the time when you're painting a cluster of trees, you want it to be darker at the bottom uh, and more dense at the bottom. And this is all my area that's going to be covered up down here. But individual stuff up here that really brings that to the to the foreground a little bit. And it, it looks a little weird to start with, just a big dark mass, but I know that my plan is to put some lighter stuff in front of that. Weird spot, okay. The trunks are showing through good enough. I don't feel like I need to, uh, to cover them up. I think that's probably all I'm gonna do with the right side trees for now. Left side trees, and I purposely made that side a little browner and I want my, because the light, like I said, is coming through behind that. That's more in shadow. Light's landing on this side a little more. I'm going to give it a little bit more yellow. Make it a little, I'm not putting any white in any of this, though. Just a little more yellow makes it more green. But I don't want that green. It's not <laughs> super green, not yet. Uh, and again, looking at where this hill falls, it's going to have light on it, so I need some dark at the bottom to contrast it. I'm not going to come nearly as high up with this. This is more just the undergrowth of the, uh, behind the hill here. More like little, little stuff. A little darker. And for 
these areas of kind of close up. You know, if you're not showing up as good as it did when it was white behind there, but you show up a little bit. Scratch some lens in there. A bunch of this and it looks weird to start with but then if you come back and kind of touch over it it really makes it look like you spend a lot of time painting limbs and trees and things in there so just thickening up darkening up the woods at the bottom of the tree lines on both sides and then we're gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna come back and put some actual land in here so go ahead and get that far I'm gonna put a placeholder for now and let it be dry we'll start with some dark color almost black but I want to, this one this time I want to lean it a little more towards the brown and yeah now instead of making this just one big you know flat hill it's, it's good to put some character into it and I, I can do a lot of that later but right now I want to block it in but I think I want it to come on out a little in the front and maybe have a little, a little spot that sticks out a little further there breaks it up a little bit so I mean instead of instead of having one big mass mm -hmm. um, this top edge I don't want to cut it too hard in there and make it hard to cover up and soften that just a little because I don't really want that too hard of an edge I definitely don't want a clean straight line all the way down making it look <laughs> so choppy, ugly, leaving some stuff in there, brush strokes. You think that would be the easy thing to do? You need clean straight lines. At this point, your your brush strokes kind of start defining which way the land goes. So start thinking about your your brush strokes a little bit. Shaping the land here. It's going to have more layers on it. Now, when you are painting water, you're going to keep as many horizontal lines. You don't want anything 45 degree angles or anything. You want these lines at the bottom of the water to be pr pretty, uh, pretty straight. I mean, you know, pretty horizontal out here. So it's like straight. This will grow and change a little as I go too. I mean, it's. It's always adjustable. But my land is kind of flowing down that way. Yeah, that works. It's a, I saved myself a bunch of steps later trying to create texture just by making it messy looking. So if you go make, make it perfect and pretty, then you got to come back and mess it up later. It just takes extra steps. On the, uh, on the right side, uh, there is land. You're not really going to be able to see it much. Start a little lower. Just throw it in there just to show you where it's at. It's going to kind of be in here. I'm, I'm ignoring that stuff in front and just painting it because I can cover all that up that I want to. Um, Is that add lighter some, or darker? It, it's just a placeholder. It's whatever. It could be purple if you want it to be. <laughs> I'm going to go with this lighter color and start putting in some of these rocks. Now, the key to rocks and depth, and y'all painted some rocks already, mm -hmm. but you, you don't want, you do want them to get smaller as they go back. But if you try, if all the ones in the foreground are size 10, and then 9s and 8s and 7s and 6s, they still look too uniform. So in the foreground, you got to have, you know, 7 to 10, you know, and then the next layer, you got to have 4 to 6, you know what I mean? And then, so you got still got to have variation. So these in the back are small, but there's some big ones. You know, there's some larger rocks. Now, rocks are horizontal. They're going to be laying flat. These are, don't, don't make a bunch of potatoes. <laughs> we want some that are kind of laying, stacked, stacked around with each other. And if you use a flat blade like this, you can kind of work different angles. You know, leave some cracks in there, but don't let them completely avoid each other. Hardest thing in any of this is to make things that look random. So I've got a couple different brushes. And like we say all the time, most of this is going to be covered up, so just go wild with it. Now, the sunlight's kind of coming from back behind everything and laying across, so I'm kind of, with this lighter color, I'm trying to find the highlight side. 
of those rocks. So some are going to be sticking up more than others. And I've got another little flat brush here that I can use to vary my sizes a little bit. Even just with that one brush, they're not all the same size. But you can come back in here with this one and make some different sizes. But I don't really want to leave a perfect gap between each one either. You know. These work better if you throw them in quickly. You just don't want any that are too round or too vertical. You want all these to be kind of horizontal. They're going to come down into here, all the way across here, really. And they're going to meet up with other rocks on this side. But for now, just kind of putting some placeholders in there. I'll come back and see what it gave me later. This part, if you just kind of do it, then you can let it dry, you can come back to it, and you can see rocks you didn't even know you painted. Find, find little things it gives you. Like I said, the rocks are going to come up this side, and this sunlight, this is just, this first color is a lighter color, but I'm going to definitely come back and highlight and put some shadows to do a lot more work to these rocks. But you're thinking, when you're putting the lighter colors on, you're thinking, where does the sun hit? So the sun's coming across these, this area. probably need some more dark area down here before I get too much into these rocks but eventually I want to have a bunch of rocks down here and when we put our creek in we'll have rocks flowing out into the water all different places for now it's this placeholder and this placeholder if you get that far the next You don't want these getting too big on that left side. But I'm going to put some tree trunks in here. This is that dark, almost black. Now, these, again, just same way with the rocks. You got to be very variation of sizes, but they need to get smaller in general as they go further away. But the, the trick to making this land look, have some shape, is having these trees land in different places. So having like, you know, a few that, a few that stop on the, or go behind the hill, you know, is, is one, one tree. You may have a thicker one that comes down in front of. Come down in front of the hill. Sometimes on these trees that over the creek, that lean over the creek, they kind of lean in like that before they start going up. And then you know the rule with trees, they get thicker at the bottom. You notice how that one's getting a little wider at the top? The only problem there is you don't want to get carried away and end up having a massive telephone pole. Pretty delicate trees. <clears throat> and again, like the rocks, the trees, the hardest thing is I want to have a variation of sizes, a variation of landing spots, several that stop behind the hill, and then several that go in front of. And you make sure you don't space them evenly. You don't want to have them perfectly, uh, you know, prison bars. If you don't, if you don't purposely try to randomize them, they will be perfect. Your mm -hmm. brain will want to make them perfect. Um, thicker one here that lands a little shorter. And, and I don't, I didn't have a pre-planned idea of where this hill, how this, how this hill is shaped. But as these trees start landing there, you see it starts getting some depth. Um, thicker ones come further up, the thinner ones are in the back, and you'll just do, you know, as many of those as you want to do. Some super skinny, some, some thicker. Uh, that's probably enough for now. I'll let that be that for now. We're going to have these really heavy ones on this side in the front later on. 
So let's get that far. Let's get our general shape for rocks, general shape for the land, and some dark trees on the left. Right in the beginning. That's what we can yep. say. Ready as we got a, uh, this step is still blocking in the bottom half of the canvas, but we, it'll help to put this in so you can kind of visualize where everything's going before we get too confused. Now, some of you who have a lot of rocks and started to put a lot in, you may even have to cover some of that up to get the water to look right. But um, I want to start with our typical color, our dark color. Put a little yellow in it because the water is, what color is water? Whatever, color, Whatever is color it's reflecting. So in the middle, it's going to reflect this lighter color. On the outside, it's going to reflect that, that green. So this is one of those that we're going to have to throw the colors in and then blend them on the canvas and work quickly. If you're sitting in front of the air conditioner back there, you may have trouble <coughs> with this, <laughs> with the blending colors. This is my kind of darker green color from up here. All right. I'm going to put some of that in here. And, and this, these lines, I, I want to soften them as much as I can because we're going to have to, you know, blend that in later. I don't want a hard line to have to cover up. But it's darker there. May even be a little more towards brown on this side. I don't have very much, if any, white in here. Just the tiniest amount just to make it cover a little bit better. Some water. That's some ugly water, isn't it? <laughs> So this, this color here, so the green on that side, I'm kind of avoiding my little, uh, my little cliff here so I can see where to put that later. Redraw it later. I definitely want to get more green on this, in this water. Green highlights underneath where there's greenery showing. That's it. Those of you back in front of the fan may have a hard time making this work, blending on the canvas this way. Patch these colors in. And while that's still wet, this is whiter sky, almost sky color. Almost. Right here in the middle. I'm not shaping it yet, I'm just kind of getting the colors. The colors right for now. And we have to Before it dries, I'm just going to blend all this out. Now, a lot of this will be covered with like ripples and things like that, but uh, got to get some color on there. And that's my land mass there. But I know that I want my water to come around the corner from here, more or less. And I want it to kind of flow around here and then kind of come back up and under that section. Okay, down into this part. Keeping the strokes horizontal, because some of that might show through, but we will you know, be able to cover some of that up. That's the general idea. Now, I, I, mine, I don't like, they're a little too close further back. But this line at the top, I want to keep it pretty horizontal. Pretty clear that this goes around the corner. And I can build the rest of this out with rocks. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by if you've made too many rocks, you may have to kind of paint over some of them. But you know, we work in layers and you just got to keep working it until it's shaped the way you want it to shape. I just want to see that flow around the corner. And I know I want to have some sticking out, you know, some little bitty pieces of land sticking out over here. 
I'll, I'll work those shapes in as we go too. To general shading in of water, some of that will be covered up with ripples. I may go back and tint the color. If you get the values in place, like usual, if you get the dark to dark, the light to light, you can come back later and tint the color if you need to. And I probably will need to make it a little greener. But let's get that far. I'm gonna let it dry, then I'm gonna tint it a little bit. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna work on um, to, when we get back is we'll finish this side completely and these uh, probably block in the beginning and put the big tree trunks in, the, in there. So we're not gonna finish the, this. We'll finish that whole side and the trees and then we'll detail this side a little bit more too next week. I think what I want to do first is do a, uh, I, I was fighting with the thought, but the idea of putting maybe some sunlight across here that's a visible sun rays. I think they'll help sell the illusion, but I don't want to put them, I don't want them to be so dominant that it's, that that's all you see. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to start by just putting some of that in. Maybe put it in and wipe it off and maybe some of it stays behind. How about that? We gave me a couple paper towels. That's the one thing I didn't get. Some paper towels that I'm going to need first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when you do this, I want to put just a touch of yellow in my white and put some water in it. And you got to be careful not to, I don't want the sun to be right here. So I don't want the rays coming from right. one spot. Um, I really want the sun to be falling across. It's kind of maybe late afternoon, the sun's way out here. It's kind of falling across these rocks, landing on this shore, the side of these trees, kind of lighting up that shore like there's a clearing over here. Um, so I want to want to come from up here, not from the very corner of the mm -hmm. canvas. Or, so in other words, don't let your radius be too tight on that. Let them kind of come in wide like that if you're gonna, if you're gonna do this. I don't know that this is 100% necessary, but like I said, I might just put some of it in and wipe it off mm -hmm. and see what stays. See what I like about it. You should all, these should go to a central point. They should, they should lead to a point, but that yeah, point is like way, out, way out here, yeah. This is the sun right here. There you go, way up, <laughs> way up there. And I don't want prison bars. I don't want them to look exactly <laughs> the same. Let's try it real light. So it's really yeah, it's real thin paint and it's real soft touch. Um, and then like I said, once I get that kind of there, I think I want to like it a little bit. <clears throat> Leave very little of it showing through. Mm -hmm. I, that's probably enough if I need to come back later and do some. But we're going to have trees here. You're going to have a lot of stuff in mm -hmm. More so than the, the rays themselves. So now the next idea, the next project here, we got, we're going to work on this, these, this side, these rocks, little rocks in the water back here, and all of the stuff that where the light hits the land here try to finish up kind of both yeah. of these sides today but knowing that this foreground is going to have these huge trees that are going to come up and block some of this so i really want these rocks on the right to be light because they are going to be uh, contrasted with the dark trees in the foreground mm -hmm. but they're they're kind of mid gray right now that top color I want it to be almost white. I'm going to go with really light gray with a tiny bit of yellow in it. And it, it may get lighter than this. I do a layer and see how it looks. But thinking about the sun landing there, where is the brightest bright spots going to be? I mean, the rocks that are facing that way obviously are going to have bright sides to them. You don't really have to color the whole tops of these either. You can kind of put a little light spot on them, smear it around. This little bit of detail, some of it's going to be lost when we cover this up. But by having, by having all this bright area here, it's going to really make our trees up front look good. Keeping my set, my highlight to the right side as much as possible. Since that's the way the sun's kind of coming from. 
So the rocks that kind of tilt that way are going to get the most sun. They're going to be the brightest. So what you could do is kind of go through first and do all the, all the ones that are kind of facing that direction. And then maybe come back with a lighter or a darker color for the ones mm -hmm. facing the other way. I think that surface there. Mm -hmm. Play with this a little, go a little dark, a little light, you know, different sizes as, you, as we talked about. But these are far away, so they're all fairly small. Don't get too carried away with the have boulders back there just yet. <laughs> and now if the light is strong on this one side, the shadow is going to be strong under that, mm -hmm. right? So doing a, if you're trying to paint light, it's just as important to paint the dark. The dark side's dark. Mm Building that up a little at a time. I don't want it to look like a wall. I want them to kind of lay on top of each other. That's really bright right there. Every single individual rock it kind of needs to look like a mass of rocks eventually. Out in the middle here, I may come back and work on that a little more. Out in the middle, there's also a lot of little, a lot of little rocks that are going to be kind of out into the water. And you can start light or start dark. They're going to be light on top, dark on the bottom, of course. But I want them to kind of trail off into the water and have the other side trail off kind of behind it that kind of creates that zigzag. One is higher than the other to make it the f further back. Bottom line is there's rocks all up and down this creek. The whole creek bed is full of rocks. The, the surfaces that are facing that are facing this way are going to be really bright. I'm going to put a bunch more rocks under here all around the bottom of here. The, uh, but we're going to think about rocks but we're also going to think about the trees. I haven't done a lot of uh, all over myself. I haven't done any kind of detail to these trees. They were just a black yeah. um, shadow. But you can come in here with your light side, and if you've if you've done trees in here before, you know this this process. Kind of put some light on there on that light edge. Doesn't have to be all the way, just here and there. And then either with a clean brush or with your finger, yeah. you can kind of just smear that around. Give a little texture to that tree. But giving, leaving that side brighter. And it may take a couple layers of this to get it as bright as you want it, but especially that front tree. I know I want it to catch a lot of, catch a lot of light like that. I'll probably do a couple of iterations of that. And then some of these ones in the back, just especially the ones that are further back, they're going to be more in the woods. They're not going to show as much, but it may, just in spots, there may be, it maybe it's catching some light on that front side just enough, you know, just at the bottom edge, but not at the top, or something like that. So when we get then rocks here lots of rocks here i'm going to put more rocks around the bottom of the water some more sticking out here just trying to really create the the water the flatness of the water the depth of the water and um just that sense of the light washing across here and landing on everything i'm going to put a lot more shapes rocks texture things to this side and some grasses and things but let's uh let's go ahead and work on that and if you got questions let me know. I'll come around. It, filling in this space in here, making it not look like a, you don't want a round potato with sticks growing out of it. You're going to have a lot of texture, a lot of depth <laughs> in this little section right here. But that's got to be built up a little at a time. But let's start on this side. I may come back and show you some more on that part in a minute. All right. So one more thing we might want to do with, with the light coming across here, we're going to have a little bit of color, a little bit of greenery showing 
and, and I purposely made a lot of this back here <coughs> thicker to have something to kind of put something against. Now I don't want to get too detailed because it's far away. It's still far, pretty far back. But I'm gonna see how I can get just some green in here, just some color. That is barely showing up, but that's okay. Just way off in the, uh, right on the other side of these rocks. Just some, uh, <clears throat> very little bit of color. Start with the base, a base of a little darker green. But then what I really want to get to is this really bright <laughs> yellow color. And this is <clears throat> mostly yellow, touch of blue, touch of brown. Uh, don't want it too, too pretty. Let's see if I can get away with this. Um, a little tiny because it's so far away but I only want the light on this side of it of the leaves on the right side of the of the clusters of things but, uh, not worried about painting the you know the the bush just these leaves that glow more or less mm -hmm. Kind of trying to keep it to where the light's hitting that side. And if you like that, you can bring some of it down over, over your rocks a little. It just indicates that there's a little bit of glow coming from that light that you can't see other places. Maybe even up in these uh, bigger trees, you can see some of it. Don't get too carried away, mostly just the color. Put it on, tap it around. It helps a little bit, I think. Absolutely. Kind of put it on, tap it around with your finger, kind of smear out that left side is the easy way to. Yeah, not only too much of that, but just a little bit of color because we're getting getting really dark. These uh, rocks, the other thing I wanted to show some of you have rocks that are really white <clears throat> and kind of stark, which is good because we're going to have these dark uh, tree trunks in front of those, but on this side it's not going to be covered up. You may want to take just a touch of the yellow um, with just water. Just a touch of yellow with water. Real thin, washy, and just kind of highlight these in yellow. Just put it on wipe it off kind of give it a little glow maybe wipe it off even more <laughs> a lot of water you know just to <clears throat> that gives that a little bit of color but it also knocks down the the, the stark white. bright yeah. against you know mm -hmm. stark brightness of it you got a little too much yellow in there. <laughs> but just a little little hint you know a little tint of mm -hmm. a tint of that yellow goes a long way but this back here, I really want it. It looks weird because it's so bright, but I want it bright because these trees in front of it are really going to show. Mm -hmm. But this side needs to be a little more subdued, a little more yellowish kind of tan. Okay. Um, and, and I'm going to put a little more detail on this tree, try to make it look a little more right because that's big focus of where that light is landing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a little bit of green if you want to do that. Is we got to figure out what this big lump is over here. It's good for um, too. It, everybody's kind of looks a little different and that's okay um, eventually we're going to have a log laying across right here maybe a little different angle from a little lower that has our little turtles in there they're not going to be the focus of the thing they're just going to be kind of there kind of after after effect but this this section here we've got a it's just a black lump right now we've got to give it some shape and got to get it uh, get these trees growing out of here I do want some tall I don't know if I want this many but I do want some dark trees there, and I probably won't do all of this greenery on the trees, probably mainly the trunks. Purpose of that mostly is to cut across this really bright, uh, to create some contrast right here in this bright rocks. But the first thing I wanna do is shape up my land a little, and you can see I've already gone back and put some dark in here last week just to kind of give it some, it just looked like one big lump, and just to kind of break it up a little bit. Everybody's is going to be a little different. It's it's ground, but it may be you know elevated. It may have little kind of like this bank 
a lot of times how it's kind of washed out that's kind of what I'm going for and it mine may even have some rocks I don't know up here but first thing I want to do before I put my trees in is lighten this light part just a little bit I'm gonna get a gray that's kind of towards brown little brown little blue little white so I want to brownish gray, whatever you want to call that, dirt color. And it's got a lot of water in it. I don't want to go too extreme because I just kind of want to sneak up on it. And I'm using this big flat brush so I can get some good flat shapes. But I just want to get kind of like we did with the uh, with the rocks. I just want to have some, some areas that uh, are lighter. That would be the, the top. And this is not the final word on this, I'm going to come back and do a lot more of this to it, you know, a lot more detail and stuff to this. I'm just trying to get my lights and darks first. I'm just trying to get some, some kind of shape to that. <clears throat> Eventually I want to have some light kind of landing on some of this. Some of these rocks will have a light side to them. But just put it in in general to start with so that I can put my trees, start getting the trees in place. That's close, I mean, it takes a lot more work. but Then I'm gonna start the, uh, the big trees. Now these on the left, we got highlights, details, and I'm probably gonna come back later and highlight those even more, and maybe even these rocks, I really want that to be bright. But you've noticed these trees on the right, they're kind of in silhouette. There's not gonna be a whole lot of highlighting to those. There's some light trickling in here and there may be some light trickling through, but mostly the trunks of these trees are gonna be just black against this lighter background. So I'm gonna just start by just making it black. Maybe a lot more than that. And this is a liner brush, but it's the bigger one. It's, this is a three. You can use whatever you're comfortable with here, but just remember the rule on trees is they have to get smaller towards the top. This brush helps with that. And I do want a few of them coming from behind this and a few coming from kind of on top of it maybe. I think I want kind of some smaller ones landing on it. Let's just go with it and see what we get. Start up here. Land about right there. And I'll fix how it Fix how it joins the rock later. A little bit browner in my and some smaller ones. And remember, these trees tend tend to lean in a little. That also helps our focus on the center of the painting. It helps kind of focus everything. Variety of shapes and sizes. It might be a little too small. Okay. Little ones kind of coming up all the way from here. Coming out of maybe not out of the rock. I'm gonna tie that to it later. Don't want to perfectly space them out. Don't want to make it look like, you know, prison bars. Or telephone poles. Yeah, I'm gonna let those grow out of this little chunk of land here. Eventually gonna tile that in. Let's see, is that good enough? I think that's good for that. Now, oh, you can see through these in spots, so it'll take another coat of that for sure. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna be working on this land, same thing I did over here, but not so much with the highlights. I just wanna get the the, um, the shapes and everything matching. We're gonna come back later. Next step, we're gonna be doing some water, some rippling around the rocks and things. So shaping up the land and throwing the trees in is first step. So let's get that far. The 
Uh, next thing we're going to do is the water ripples. I got a color that's not exactly white. It's got a little bit of blue in it, a little bit of brown in it. Kind of matching my lighter sky color. And starting up here, and I've already done a, a little bit of it, but starting up here, just want to put some, it's just a little flat brush, just want to put some water under the edge of some of the rocks. It doesn't have to be all of them, and it don't have to be perfect. Um, you want to get, this is helping to establish where the water line meets the rocks. Some of those you can put on there and kind of pull off with your finger. Pull to the side. This far away stuff is really bright and it's got that sky color in it. So that adds, adds to the effect of the light coming in. As we get into here, you're really, you're really showing where the land is and where the water is with this. Don't, I don't want to lose my rocks highlights with this. In, in the uh, center of the painting where it's mostly light is where I'm going to mostly use this light color. Keeping all my lines really horizontal though. Alright? And I don't want to hide too much of my um, my water. I put some horizontal lines. What do you call it? Vertical lines. This way. Um, just as a little bit of a reflection down the water and you can see I got a couple little faint shadows from the trees. So those lines crossing with these lines gives a good effect. Um, just some little spots here and there where the water would have would have ripples. So play with that not too much but when you get into the um, when you get into the shadow part that's what I want to get to and show you. When you get into the shadow make sure to mix a little bit of your dark color with that. Get that a good bit more gray. Probably even more gray than you think it should be. Down here in in the dark areas, it'll be more gray like this. Okay, remember how we did it on the waterfall painting? Our ripples look gray. I mean, you you looking at it, you won't be able to tell the difference. It just looks like like it's in the shadows. Now, I don't want a raging river like we've done before. Uh, just want to establish the edges. And these are all horizontal lines. Don't get any 45 degree angles or or anything like that. It's going to look weird couple spots. Now our log is going to come across here and eventually I'm going to have some light filtering over here across this log. Probably work on this water a little more later. I did put some more light in here in front of this back tree because I want something that can land on this log. And I am going to do some highlighting on this tree and some more highlights in this foreground here. But I want to show you one more thing. I'm not done with the water but I'll come back and work on that some more. But I want to show you one more thing you can try on your land if I can make it work. This little bit of uh, light that's kind of dappled light landing on the on the land. Is that, I don't know if you can even tell what that is. Um, it's coming through the trees. Yeah, just light filtering through, landing on some of this stuff. The way to do that is, let me just use my little brush here. I got a base color there that I want to get just a little bit lighter than. I'm going to make my base color because I've lost it. It's just a brown with some yellow in it and some white. Try to get close to my base color as I can. All right, that's pretty close. So the first, just two steps to it. The first one, I'm just going to use that same base color, but lighten it up pretty. And this paint's not very wet. It's kind of, kind of creamy. And then you just kind of pick an area where the light's going to land. And I want to just kind of create a shape with it. And the light coming through can take any kind of shape but I'm trying to keep the lay of the land flat, so I want it to kind of shape more flat. And then I'm going to just take my finger and kind of blot it a little bit where the edges are really soft. All right, that's the, the first step of it. So keep that color and then come next to it and make a color that is much brighter, but still has that same base to it. The second color stays inside of that color some. You know, they don't go all the way to the edges, just to the very middle of it. 
And then the same kind of thing, once you get it on there, kind of blur, blur it, smear it around a little bit. And the canvas texture will give you some little glitter to it, glimmer. And you kind of see how that works. I'm going to play with it some more and put a couple little veins of light coming across there. Um, you can even go a step further with it and go even brighter just in the very middle of it. Let's it kind of intensify. And by itself, it doesn't look that convincing, but when I put a few more of them there, it'll, it'll help a little bit. But you can put some of that in if you want to, as little or as much as you want to. But let's get finished with this side and finish with our ripples in the water before next week. And I'm gonna do some highlights on this tree. So next week we can focus on the log, the turtles, and the details. So we're gonna put this log in here. I brought some turtle pictures just for reference. I don't know how much that'll help. Turtles can't be that hard to paint, right? Mm. Um, <laughs> the, the log that we're gonna put in though, the uh, most important thing is making sure it don't get out of perspective when you start adding this log. So I'm gonna, I'm going to sketch it in with paint. If you'd rather use a pencil and do it first, you can by all means do that. Um, you know, make sure it's going to look right before you before you start on it. But if I do it in paint and I just add a lot of water to it, I can put it on there. If I don't like it, I can just wipe it off. I think mine, I want it to kind of come from off the canvas over here, but back towards the land. I don't really want it floating out here in the water. But I want a pretty good angle on it. I want it to kind of come down this way and disappear into the water there. I, th I think that's probably about the angle I want to take on it. And as thick as I want to make it, probably maybe about like that. And I want it to come from up high. Now I'll put some more layers on this to make it make it work. I want it to come from kind of up high so I can have a little bit of a reflection of it down here. Not a perfect one, but a little bit of a shadow of the, of the tree underneath it. Um, but it, it is going to kind of lay into the water and kind of disappear into the, into the water there. I may have to be a little thicker at the beginning if I want to get that thick coming down. And you can, not get, don't get carried away, but you could do a couple of little, you know, limbs and things that kind of go into the water. Then when that's, uh, I'm going to get that painted, I, I, I like the light coming through. I want to land some of that on this log because what the turtles are doing is they're out there getting sun, right? They're, they lay on the log, they soak up the sun. So first we're going to get some sunlight on this log. And then when we go come back in a little while, we'll go through how to, how to put these turtles. And I'm only going to do two or three. I don't want, to, I don't want 15 of them on there. Um, but for, the, for them, it's not so much about the detail. It's going to be about the shadow and the light. And you know, a little sunlight, just something for the sun to shine on. I got this pretty prominent beam right here, so there's probably going to be one sitting right there enjoying it. But for now, the log, same way painting trees, you just got sunlight on the top side and the bottom side's in the water. Make sure everything, when it lands in the water, lands horizontal. And I may even put a couple little, you know, rocks or sticks or whatever around it to, um, you know, kind of make it feel like it's really in there. But sketch yours in first before you get too far with it. Let me look at it. And let's make sure that it's not messing up your perspective of your, of your water, since everybody's is a little different. But let's get that far. Let's get it sketched in, and then let's get the tree painted, and then we'll move on. Yeah. We don't want too much detail in them. I put those, uh, they basically just have a, a lighter tint, and their heads, the way they always lay, their heads just kind of, they look up towards the sun, you know, kind of soak up the sun, and they kind of lay in a line like that, although it looks weird to have them all lined up. But I think they would do good to have a little more highlight on the very top edge of that shell. And the trick is going to be to get it kind of rounded. But I don't want them green. Green is going to look weird. I've tried different colors and I think this kind of light brown is going to be the best bet. But for this last highlight, I might put just a, try to get it just a tint towards a little bit of a moss color just a hair and that's pretty much dry that's pretty much dry but I think I want that side face in the sun to catch to catch a lot of sunlight right there 
lawsuits. You don't need to do the right and the wrong. Yeah, I didn't think it was that was part of the justice as well. Well, he didn't like it after he did it, did you? What? The grasses. Yeah, I, I had to go back and do it over again. I colorized it a little bit different. It was too bright. Yeah. Well, mine are just raw, so it's I put hard a to tell. Moss on mine. I didn't put them on my shoes. It's hard to tell these turtles apart it's from the rocks because they are kind of the same color, but that's sort of how they work. They're camouflage. That's kind of why they're the color they are. It's going to be to get a little contrast behind what, in between what's behind it. That was so good. small, you can't really. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. That one rocks. So don't don't worry about it. He did that. Remember when he painted his brown and it was different colors? And yeah. he said later on it looked like rocks. Yeah. It was fine. You just got to like it. Mm -hmm. Some of the, 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 the he heads on them, too. He got a swimming hole. So, Heads on them need a little highlight too. I don't want to do too much. Yeah, just a little. So you can tell what it is. Well, since mine are going the other way, I put it on the top of there. Yeah, that might be even easier. There you go. Well, because mine aren't going to the water, they're laying that way. I don't know. They, they disappear too much on me. <laughs>